Uh, could I just say also that I do not advocate the use of vices on friends' heads. It's dangerous. Do not, do not, um, squeeze your, your mate's head in a vice. That's just between me and Carl and, you know, and he's he an experienced annoyer. And he probably wouldn't let me do it, to be honest. I have to offer him an awful lot of money. Also, do not smoke. There's no point. And mm. floss. I wish I'd floss when I was a kid. Also, if you've got a bicycle or anything like that for Christmas, please wear the correct well, safety well, gear. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Well, I got a bike as a kid. Yeah. Right? And my dad, uh, you know, it, I think I think the helmets used to come come with them and what have you. I popped it on, went out on my bike, coming back into the garden. Dad sees me. He said, "Come here." I said, "What?" He said, "I never want to see you wearing that helmet again. You look ridiculous." <laughs> <laughs> Carl, have we still got monkey news? We've got monkey news coming up. Now you want to be disappointed because you didn't make it to the monkey sanctuary, but you still managed to scrape together monkey news on your holiday. Yeah. That's so impressive. I found some of that. We've got. How, so how do you how do you get so many breaks and holidays? Because you went you went away with Suzanne's <coughs> parents. You've just been away with your parents. That's a couple of weeks, ten days. So that's probably about three weeks in all. You had that. You went to Manchester. You were uh, you had that day off because your trousers were wet. I mean, and you've you know I, mean, I suppose because you, you've only got one job, and you know I've got a lot more. This is just one of my jobs. But I mean. Don't you ever count your blessings? Go, God, thank God, I just I can have time off. I, I don't mm -hmm. work too hard. You know, I'm not stressed too no, much. No, no, uh, it's just all to do with when you do work, do a lot. So <laughs> I've I get a lot done. Yeah. What do you mean? I'm always doing stuff. I mean, even though when I was in Cornwall, right? I'm sat there on the grass. Mm. Uh, oh, I'd love to just sit on the grass. Uh, yeah, you're too busy with I know. Yeah. Well, you know, M me dad and Susanna playing crib, right? I. Sort of fallen out with him at <laughs> Your dad and Susanna playing Why did you fall, fallen out Because you do live him? in the 1940s. Yeah, why had you fallen out? Because with crib, have you ever played crib? Yeah. Right, you've got to be pretty good at maths. Sure. Well, you've got to make your cards add up to 15 and all Well, yeah, <laughs> I was just gonna, I was just gonna correct you on you've got to be good at maths. Yeah. What, what, algebra, quantum physics, what? No, just, just adding up. Adding up to 15. Uh, Brilliant. I mean, I mean, you can almost do it on your fingers. <laughs> <I> mean, <that's> <laughs> <laughs> you could in Cornwall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my dad's uh, really good at maths, and like he said, how many have you got? And, and he always counts, isn't it? It's like fifteen, two, fifteen, four, fifteen, six, three, three for your hat, one, and all that. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. He adds it up really one quick. One for his knob. Right. So I was like, right, hang on a minute. And he goes, no, no what do you mean, hang on? And he goes, what, what have you got? I said, oh, forget it. I said, this isn't, this isn't fun if you're gonna start getting all arty with me. Sure. So, forget it! Yeah. I love it! But he's only, I'm sure he's, I don't know him, but I'm sure he's just winding you up. It, like, his, his victory is you going, ah, oh, forget it, I'm not playing. Throughout my life so far, I've always just, I've never planned for anything, mm. right? It's just always happened. Yeah, yeah. The time, you know what I mean? Being in plays at school, never planned it, but when I did it, I went down a storm. It was that's fun. Yeah, we all remember that. So, we, I, as I remember, you did Little Donkey. Did Little Donkey, yeah. And um, then later, someone was filming at the back. Was it your dad's mate? My dad's mate, well, yeah. Yeah, and on the camcorder, he listened to it back, watched him playing it. His dad says, just off camera, what does he say? I don't want to say it because I'm in charge of the show and I'd be irresponsible. He looks like a right twat. <laughs> so, and so I, he gets I, I, home, I, I, just watching that, and then here's his dad just off camera go, he looks like a right twat. Yeah, alright, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you worried about? Your no, dad saying sorry, that on the Can word. I just interject? Because I'm really worried about this idea of Carl being on MTV. Because the problem is that, you know, let's be honest, Rick, I mean, we're we're getting by the skin of our teeth, aren't we, really? It's yeah. only Carl that's keeping this afloat. Yeah. And if he gets on MTV and the world sort of gets a sense of him and they understand him, and, and he, he won't be ours anymore. We won't be able to control him. It'll be out there. It'll be in the public well, that's, domain. that's the thing. No, no, no. No, that's the thing. It, it, that's the terrible thing, though, isn't it? It's like Carl is my pet, but mm. I realise I've got to release him into, into the wild. The wild. Sort of, and you know, because I love him, I know he's got to go free. <laughs> sure. But I yeah. want to. It's I wanna like Kez. <laughs> Maybe it's someone like beat him to death, <laughs> and we don't have to worry. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll uh, have you on though, I'll have you on as a guest. Yeah. Which, gets, which gets me on to something we've got coming up today. Oh right. yeah, he's got a new idea. Yeah. Right. Um, do you know, like, I've talked about ghosts and we had that good discussion the other week walking to yeah. the Circus Station, yeah, yeah, and I was telling you about ghosts and you were saying, Carl, don't be an idiot and all that. Uh, spoke to a woman in the week, done mm -hmm. a little interview <laughs> You've with You've done her. a little interview. Done Brilliant. a little interview, two minutes or so. With okay. a with a woman who's who's got ghosts in her house, <coughs> so uh, I look forward to uh, hearing that later. That sounds brilliant. Coming up later. Well, I'm going to play a classic tune now. I've I've just gone straight for it. I've gone for the jugular. This is Ziggy Stardust by David Bowie. Ziggy Stardust. 
by David Vale on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl was also nervous. You had a bit of shock last week, didn't you? Just a little bit. His, uh, his dad tuned in. To the show? Yeah. Um, and Carl's never told him that he actually speaks on the show. He just said, I just pressed the buttons, right? He's kept him from it. You used to do radio before and you never told him, did you? <laughs> it's because of the little donkey incident. Yeah. When he went along to well, it. Was that the, the twat incident? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he's never told him since, but, but they've promised not to listen, haven't they? Well, my dad uh, uh, my mum said to me, don't worry, don't be put off this week, because, um, <laughs> you know, I've, no. I've, I've, I've told him he can't listen, but I hear my dad in the background kind of going, well, Alex. <laughs> so, he might be listening. <laughs> so that's extra pressure. Yeah. Plus a camera crew in. Yeah. <laughs> I know. You, you don't, don't like it, about, do you? Yeah, this is good training for MTV, because then he can watch you on TV. I mean, what's he going to make of that? Oh. Yeah. Does he know you're bald? Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't keep your hat on when you're with him and say, oh no, I'll just press the buttons. No, it's no. just, it's just, you know, it's like when when I was in any plays, I didn't tell him. No. Um, any sort of parents' evening, I never gave him the note. Uh -huh. Really? Uh -huh. Yeah. So what did the teachers think? You were just an orphan? No, just on an off chance. Um, my mate's dad spoke to me dad once, I think, and sort of said, oh, you're going to school to see how, you know, your kid's doing. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> So there's a parents' evening, so he, he went said to, what kid? He went to one, and that's when Mrs. Matthews said I'd never be a high flyer. <laughs> <laughs> How wrong was she? Yeah. Well, I think we should call Mrs. Matthews and make her eat her words. Well. <laughs> ah, she had turned on to MTV when, uh, I don't know, that, like their, their slamming session. Yeah. yeah. And they're, they're going, that's young Pilkington. <laughs> He's bald, but it's definitely him. <laughs> I recognise that Willie Hat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nelly, ride with me. Uh, that's featuring City Spud. I don't know if you're <laughs> aware of that, but uh, there we are. Good, nice summer tune. Next Carl, event. tell uh, Steve what you just told me when Steve was in the toilet. Then, right? You know, I'd, I'd just been away with my mum and dad and that. Mm. And uh, one of the things I always like doing is having a good chat with my dad about stuff he got up to when he was a kid and that. Yeah. Right, because he got up to loads of stuff, and every time I see him, he tells me something. And I think it's like. Why are you just telling me that now? It's yeah. brilliant. Yeah. Right? So, uh... <laughs> I, I, I mean, to me, he's kind of like Ronnie Biggs or someone. He's just the most extraordinary kind of Well, this, this character, happened, character. right? I, I can't remember. There was a delay yesterday. There was problems on the Paddington line. Yeah. And he was saying, our oh, trains aren't what they used to be. Sure. Um, he said, you know, he said I was looking... They used to be horses, didn't they? Well, he, he was like, he was looking in the booklet, and it was saying, how oh, you can have your bags collected if you want, but it costs you a fiver. Yeah. So that's outrageous. Sure, of course. Right, so he said, that's the problem with this country. Uh, we've got good with computers and that, but when it comes to, like, getting service, it's gone out the window. Yeah. Right? So he said, when I worked on the trains, you know, and he was going on like this, that and the other, so I said, oh, I didn't know you worked on the trains. He said, uh, yeah, yeah, when I was 18, right, it was his job to get the coal, right, and chuck it in the engine. Uh-huh. Right? And um, one day he's in, uh, He's in Grand Central Station in Manchester, which is now the GMEX Centre. Right. Right? And that was like the main station. And, uh, he was in there. The fella who should have been sort of driving the train, yeah. right? He said, oh, I'm just nipping to the pub. Sure. So you just stay here, keep the engine topped up and stuff. Yeah. So he's like, yeah. Oh, For a quick getaway. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, uh, so the fella goes in, in the pub. And my dad's in there, you know, putting the coal on. He, he did his bacon and eggs on a little, uh, a little shovel. Yep, yep. And, uh, anyway, fella comes up, he says, right, can you move the, uh, train forward now? Oh, blimey. So he was like, oh. So he didn't want to say, oh, the fella's in the pub, because he'd know, he'd say, well, what's he doing in the pub? He should be working, right? So he said, yeah, 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 no problem, I'll sort it out. Right, so he, uh, puts it, puts it into gear or whatever you do on, on them trains, Sure, right? puts it into first, yeah. Starts going forward. Now, People who don't know about trains, something that I learnt is if you're carrying a load of coal or whatever on the back of it, they don't have brakes on each carriage, right? It's only the engine that has brakes on it. Uh -huh. So when you pull the brakes on the on the engine, the whole weight of what it's pulling is pushing you forward. Sure. Right? Yeah. So he doesn't realise this though, because he's uh, he's just used to cooking bacon and eggs and chucking coal. Of course, yeah. So you've got to slam the brakes on sooner than you would normally. Yeah. Well, you have to anticipate it, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he, he didn't know that, Could so he, yeah. he's pulling in, he's thinking, right, well, put the brakes, I'll put the brakes on now, yeah. right? Puts the brakes on, the train just keeps going, he's going, oh god, it's not stopping. Sure. It ploughs right through the signal box. <laughs> right? Uh, loads the of damage. The baboon pulling the signal, don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> loads of loads of damage done. Apparently, it, it if it was today's money, yeah. it'd be about three to four <laughs> million pounds worth of damage. It it shut the station <laughs> off God. for four weeks. Um, but he didn't lose his job. The fella had lost his job. The f one who was in the in the pub. Yeah. Um, he said the funny thing was, he said like four million pounds worth of damage. Um, he did his ankle, his uh, his wrist in. He had three weeks off sick and got paid. <laughs> so it's brilliant. <laughs> so I love your family. It's extraordinary. The Pilkinson gene. Weird, isn't it? I'd like to see a documentary following you and your family. You'd have to get the family involved. No, the sort of stuff my dad goes on about. They'd never put it on telly. <laughs> 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 Placebo. This picture on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right. So you've been educated there, haven't you? The yeah, Trojan so horse. Yeah, yeah. The Trojan horse. And that's of course where the phrase "Beware Greeks bearing gifts" comes from. <laughs> Silence again. Yeah. You haven't what, heard what? that one? Go on. What? What's that again? Beware Greeks bearing gifts. Right. What do you think that means? Uh, I don't know. I mean, what is that? Is that used worldwide or what? Will he say that in Greece as well, or? Because uh. <laughs> imagine Christmas Day is rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't actually mean beware of Greeks wearing gifts. It's more to do with like maybe it's too good to be true, or you know. It's just the opposite to don't look a gift horse in the mouth. Well, for probably where it came from was Justin well. from South End emailed in, he just said, uh, for the Trojans not to have spotted that it was a trick, they must have been the biggest bunch of moronic mm, yeah, ever to have walked the earth. Does Carl have any Trojan in him by any chance? Cheeky, isn't it? Eh? What? Never <laughs> mind. What? I think that probably <laughs> proves it. I thought of another one like as well. I was saying, you may as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. I've never heard, I don't think I've heard that. I have heard it, but I don't think I've ever used it in common parlance. Well, it's like if you're gonna do something, you know, I might as well go the whole hog, depending on the the outcome, but because it's based on reality. That's why I like it because obviously the poor people used to poach, and if they were caught stealing, you know, a sheep or anything, they would be hung. So if you're going to get caught, don't steal a lamb. You know, at least feed your family for a few weeks. Right, sure. Kill a sheep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually hung, but killing a sheep. Oh, your dad would be in trouble down in oh. Wales stealing stuff from that uh, oh. from that oh. phone box. Well, he, he has a couple of sayings, right? Your uh, mm. Yeah, I've, I've never asked him what they mean. Um, <laughs> Why would you? Ask what, Suzanne. One is, uh, don't try and teach your granny to suck eggs. Yeah. Well, what does that mean? That means, uh, it's patronising to, 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 of course, of course I know that. You're, you're talking to someone who knows more about this subject than you. But how did that happen then? How did that saying come about? Well, it's not. It, it's it's a totally made up thing. It's like your granny sucks eggs, isn't she? Because she's she's older than you, and it's probably a lost art or something. All right. Uh, and the other one um, sucks eggs. Sucks yeah. eggs. Yeah. Sucks eggs. Sorry, I thought you said something else. <laughs> uh, yeah. Don't nudge your granny when she's shaving. What? what? Don't, sorry. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. Don't nudge. Your, sorry. sorry well, that's lower. I can't. Don't, don't, don't nudge, nudge your you. granny when she's having a shave. Well, what is that in context? Because I can't work out what the analogy is there, because that might just be you, you, when you were little, you used to run up to your granny while she was shaving or something. But what, uh, why is your granny shaving? Well, no, what, what context is that said in? Tell me the last time your dad ever said that, and I'll try and work out what it means. Uh, can't remember. I can't, I, I, I don't are know. Are you sure these are specific to your granny? <laughs> yeah, I was just saying, where are you nudging your granny? She was going, yeah. get lost, Carl. She was shaving off her moustache. Or oh. giving herself a Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> That's grotesque. <laughs> suck an egg, suck an egg, suck an egg. Suck an egg. That instead. Oh, That's oh yeah. god. That's made, that's <laughs> yeah, made, that's made it, it worse. worse. Carl's granny sucking eggs whilst that's... <laughs> that Give is my... a Brazilian. <laughs> <laughs> We've no idea. I don't know what that means. Don't nudge your granny while she's shaving. <laughs> what, yeah. Parmesan? I, I don't know. Maybe someone knows. You might be right, maybe. Well, it's email in. Tell us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cardigans, you're the storm on XFM 104.9. Well, 
nearly the end of the show, but we wouldn't, you know, we wouldn't let them down, would we? You know what it is now, don't you? Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. <laughs> right. Now, whilst I was in Cornwall, I wasn't online. I didn't no. have the internet, so it was like, oh, what am I going to do? And I didn't come back till yesterday. I thought there's loads going on that I don't know about in the monkey world and stuff. I was hoping to get some from the zoo that I was meant to be going to. Of course, that didn't happen. So I said to my dad, do you know anything about monkeys? Have you got any stories with monkeys? Brilliant. This is a, no, this is what Trevor McDonald does. <laughs> Turned out. Ca- quarter to ten, he goes, yeah. oh, I'm nothing. <laughs> dad, anything happened? You got anything politics? Anything politics, dad? <laughs> this isn't monkey news, I'm just giving you this free. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Uh, turned out one of his mates used to have a chimp. <laughs> right. Um, what do you mean one of his mates used to have a chimp? Well, two two of his mates. Mind oh, you, sorry, yeah, mate, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was thinking it sounded a bit far-fetched living in Manchester-like, <laughs> but if there was two of them. He had a chimp, um, had to thump it in the head. <laughs> <laughs> So doing what? Answering back? <laughs> oh God! Tried it on with his wife. <laughs> Had to stop it in the end for trying it on with his wife. I love it. I love it. It's a proper fist fight in a pub in Manchester. Oh. I'd call him up, but he's one of them who like swears all the time. Right. Oh. I mean, it'd be good. It'd be good to get him on. And C- just, let's interview him. Can we not interview him pre-record? We can bleep out the swear. I'd love to hear his story. Do a lot of Work that. Yeah, well, well, it, 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 well, we're not scared of work, are we? No, I mean, I'll get you know. myself if you can't be bothered. Yeah, oh, you know, I so. have a word, I have a word, I saw it out. Yeah, try yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort uh, that out. Yeah, well, don't yeah. tell us the rest of the story then, let's let him say in his own No, words. but there was another one as well. Uh, some when fella- you say you can get him on, but he swears a lot, you mean the monkey? <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming he's more coherent than your dad's mate. <laughs> but there's him, and there's some other fella he knows who had a funny name, I'll have to find out, because you'll love his name. But he was a drag artist. Yeah. And, uh I think he said he went, my dad went round one day, I don't know why, right? Went around there, knocked on the door, chimpanzee. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Carl, I don't know what you're doing, mate. I don't know where this place you live, next door there's an horse in the front room. There's chimps mad, running round. It's mad. Anyway, uh <laughs> Chimpanzee! <laughs> is, is that the end of the story? There's a chimpanzee in the door and that's the end. You sure it wasn't the drag ice before he shaved? No, I'm sure no. it wasn't your grand. Because oh. I like the really airy ones that decide they can be female impersonators. <laughs> yeah, your grand. <laughs> you and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past. Mm. And I'd be interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road. And they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars. They're crashing into park cars on their skateboards. Uh, they're just generally making hay- mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can he do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll oh, piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch him in the actual act of violence, which is what they've got to do to uh, apparently convict them. So uh, they, they don't know who to turn to, really. It's rather like when a little old lady went and got the A-team, you know. The it's a, it's a, you know, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. She knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. You see, it's weird because now, now it has got out of hand. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, years ago when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, Summers some, were nicer as well, weren't they? Well, <laughs> it did seem that way, didn't it? Yeah. Right, and police are getting shorter, aren't you? But you that? yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tearaway. Didn't, you didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids I here. Mean, the but thing is, I was I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge and sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed thought, himself <laughs> just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door and I thought, <laughs> oh God, this is a fellow who saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how high I could throw it. <laughs> of course you were. <laughs> it Did it keep landing on your head? <laughs> That would explain a lot. <laughs> and, uh, it, it came down. Chucking the uh, stone in the air, love it. See how far I it's could brilliant. throw. Brilliant. So you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone. Did you invent that, that game? Right. Did so you get anyway. the stone for your birthday? 
<laughs> go and play with your stone. He gave one to Suzanne. <laughs> Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> yeah. no, the thing is, right, and it came down at a fun, funny angle, and it ate, of course it did. It ate the back of this uh, car, and the, and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it. Yeah. In case yeah. you got a frosty window. Yeah. So I thought, oh god. <laughs> so I legged it in, got on the settee, went to sleep, knocked at the door. Genius! It's went a brilliant plan. It's a brilliant plan. <laughs> I couldn't be guilty. I'm asleep. So, so I love the idea. So uh, the thing is, our lounge used to sort of you could you could see in from the door, right? So this family who uh, <laughs> have saw me do it, let, saw me asleep on the settee, and my mum said, "Go and get the door." And I sort of went oh, as if I'd been asleep, yeah. and went to the door like rubbing my eyes. And uh, the fella said, "What did you run off for? I saw you." I was like, "Oh no." And I didn't see me dad, I went out, it was when he was working sort of evenings, so I went out so I didn't have to see me dad. And then the next day I came, fr I came home from school and my dad said, 45 quid. Oof. That's all he said, That's all he, he looked at me. And then you fell asleep when he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said, <laughs> no, yeah. 45 quid. No, the thing Carl, right. he, he didn't have to do 45 anything. pounds, Carl, now I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But do you know what I mean? It's like, I knew I did wrong, uh, and I was scared that my dad was going to belt me. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, well, you know, I'll be more careful next but time. But that was that. clearly good parenting on the part of your father, because these young tykes, that, clearly they don't have the, uh, what the, do the, you do? the, the father's fault. I don't even, I, I don't know if If I you were living help. in that street, very quickly, what would you do? What, what, would, what would your approach be? If you were living in his street? What if, what if they'd come home, right, and they'd, they'd just vandalised all your pebbles, right, yeah. that you'd been saving over the years, and just threw your gravel away? What would yeah. you do if they just... I'd probably clout one of them. So you'd use violence? I think it's the only way sometimes. Sometimes it's the only way. <laughs> and I don't, I don't mean, you know, really bad, but I'd, I'd show them that I'm not putting up with this. Right. And th then the problem is you've got their family coming round and they're probably quite Go to sleep. Yeah. If you hit a kid and the dad comes down, just go to yeah. sleep. Yeah. Just do it. <laughs> so, yeah, um, equally, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, yeah. a bank job yeah. or a murder. Remember to take the stocking off your head, because if they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. Just go, oh, I had a weird dream. It won't work. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? If Tony Blair came to you and he went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of trouble here. I, I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. I've tried spin. I've tried being tough. I've tried backing down. I've tried getting other countries involved. They don't want to know. What do I do? What do I do? Uh -huh. You don't know. Tricky one. I don't it is a tricky, I don't it is a tricky one. Yes. I don't worry about it. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just get in the bath. Put a mattress on the on top of you. That's it. Sorry, what, why are you doing Ooh, that? Ooh, slow down. Why are you doing that? That's what they say you do, isn't it? If it kicks off. If what uh, kicks off? If, if, there's, if there's a war and that, you, you get in the bath, put a mattress on top. Right. Did they do that in the Second World War for six years? Was that make, making bunk beds? That's what I read somewhere. Yeah. Get, is the bath full of water? Uh. No. no, 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 no. That'd be daft. Okay. I think yeah, that I think they were enamel baths then, though. I think they'd stop a bit of shrapnel. I think the plastic ones you get nowadays would probably melt on you. And the mattress where your dad has cut it in half, all the foam would come out and the springs would get you in the eye. Oh, talking about me dad. Steve, you'll love this, right? Go on. Um, my dad hates, uh, he hates being ripped off, right? Yes. Well, no, I can relate to that. That's important. Um, hates coming to London now. He always wants me to go and see them rather than come here because he just thinks London is like a big rip off. Mm. Uh, last time he came he got annoyed because I bought him a scone and a cup of tea for like three of us and it was fourteen pounds and he just yeah. was livid. <laughs> and then uh, we had an argument about that and then <laughs> we went to the Millennium Wheel and I said, do you fancy going on this? He said, oh, all right. And then he saw the price and it was something like twenty quid or something. And he said, twenty quid to go up in the air to look at stuff that's on the ground. He said, I might as well stay on the ground. Brilliant. Right? Thought, good point. His logic is impeccable. So anyway, this is going on. Anyway, he spoke to me the other day, I said, how are things? Are they alright? And that. he said, oh, being ripped off. I said, why? He said, he ordered, do you know the place where he got a new bed from because he cut the other one of course, off? Yeah. Right? He, uh, he got this bed out of a catalogue. So, uh, so he sorted out a payment on the phone. He said, look, you're ripping me off a bit here on the interest thing, but, um, well, let's do a deal. We'll sort out a new monthly payment. That's different to the, what it says in the catalogue. And they said, yeah, we'll go along with that. Anyway, so he sorted that out. He was happy. The bed arrived. It's a nice bed. He said, that's great. So anyway, uh, he got the bill for it. And it was the original price. Oh, I thought it might be the case, yeah. Right. So he called up and said, I'm not happy with this. He said, we, we said a deal. And I'm like, oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, right, don't send me your catalogues anymore. He said, I'm not, I'm not buying anything from you, you're rip-off merchants, uh -huh. right? Um, so anyway, a few, few weeks go by, post comes, 
on the another catalogue oh, in the post. he's livid. Right, so he was well annoyed. Yeah. So he looked on the back and it said on it, this catalogue will always be property of, you know, the company that, that does it. Um, if w so you can't throw it away. If, if we request to have it back, we've got the permission to, to get it back off you, right? right? So he thought, right, well, they're out of order. I told them not to send me one, and they have done, and they're saying I can't chuck it away. So he called them up and said, uh, all right, Mr. Pilkington here, but I bet off you, you conned me and that. <laughs> but, you know, forget that. We've, yeah. we've dealt with that. You've sent me a catalogue, I told you not to. It says on the back here that this will always be yours. Yeah? So, in a way, you're using my house as a warehouse. I'll be charging you 26 pence or something uh, a day. Brilliant. He said, you already owe me £6.28. <laughs> something like that. Genius. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, sorted it out. So again, you know, it's- it So hang on, but are they going along with this? I don't know what happened. He said they sounded annoyed and said they'd get back to him and they haven't, but he said, I'm not bothered. They can take as long as they want because the money just keeps going up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, what sort of profit has he made so far? Well, when I spoke to him in the week, it was like £6 odd. Yeah. That was, I think that was on Tuesday, so, so he's, 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 you know, he's just leaving it's it's like an investment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an antique he's it's just, yeah, yeah. It's just going up every day, so, uh. Well, keep us posted on that. That's yeah, dynamite. I, I, one day we need to speak to your father. Yeah, I think so. So many questions I need think to we be do. asked of him. But I might sit and give you a letter to take home. <laughs> yeah. Dear Mr. Pilkington. <laughs> your son, Carl. <laughs> New single from, uh, Nick Cave. I think I'm looking forward to it. Steve? Yes. I think, uh, Carl's gonna put most people to shame. We were talking about generosity earlier. Cause Carl is a nice, generous bloke when it, when it really comes to it. He's paying for Father's Day. He's paying for the cottage that he's going away with his dad. Are you really, Carl? Yeah. Right. Well, there's no way of us proving if that's true or not. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> well, you could be lying. But why would I do that? Well, because you want to show off. I didn't do it on air, you mentioned it. <laughs> I don't want people to know how generous I am. <laughs> I just... <laughs> right. Just do it, just get on with it. Sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, like charity yeah. work in that. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Do you, do you, do, but I, I'd have thought that you wouldn't have fallen for Father's Day. I'd have thought you'd have known that it was like... Well, we don't. I mean, to be honest, there's a bit of a coincidence, because I paid yeah. for it anyway and it's happened to fall on... Right. On Father's Day, mm. right? Don't I mean, buy that's a card. Not don't, that don't, don't fall for it. It, it. I mean, obviously that and Mother's Day, and a plethora of other things were, I mean, literally invented mm. by card companies to make more money. I know. Uh, yeah. That's that's that's. Uh, I mean, my dad always says, "Don't don't get him a card or anything," because um, he hates it with, with all these things that I'd like, you know, rip off times really, just ripping people off. Yeah. Um, so sounds, a bit, sounds a bit stingy, though. Well, no, no. I mean, he's right. Yeah, he's right. It's just because uh, fellas aren't bothered about getting cards anyway, are they? <laughs> but the the other thing that he noticed, um, you know, helping out the flower companies, the Princess Diana thing when she oh, f sorry, yeah. no. Jesus, Cry God. So when yeah, when Carl, when what 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 do you mean? What no, do you mean? That's that's what he said. He said, "Oh, I nearly swore then because I was uh, you surprise me all the time." No, no, but I'm just, that is incredible. Sorry, what I don't understand. What are you talking about? All the about? flowers that were sort of sold that day, right? What right. for people to leave as a commemoration? Or yeah, they, they, they made a made a mint, didn't they? Who did? Flower companies. Right. So what so are you saying? saying so you're he saying was just saying, you know, makes you wonder. <laughs> what whether about what whether it was in the floor or behind the hit. Oh. So it's a conspiracy. <laughs> it's a conspiracy by the flower companies. I would love to see you and your dad just sitting at home watching a bit of Channel 5 when apes go mental, right, with your, with your roast dinner. When's that dinner. on? When's that on? <laughs> <laughs> and then do that. Like, well, yeah, well, you know, you know, kill Diana, don't you? Flower company's son. Right, right, quite right, Dad, you're not wrong. What are you talking about? No, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm just saying, it's, it's like you were saying about the cards, you know, on <laughs> Father's Day and that, it's, it's, it's just a bit, too much a of a coincidence, weird. too much of a coincidence. I'd be interested to see sort of, you know, like the business graph, sure. <laughs> yeah. on how the companies were doing, then suddenly, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? yeah, but then, but then by the same token, uh, Elton John, you know, he, saw, he had the biggest selling hit record, didn't he, off the back of that? Mm. I mean, so, is he incriminated as well? If you want, I mean, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's a conspiracy there, theory you've not kind of analysed terribly closely. You've put it out there, and if people maybe who are investigating want to kind of add that into their inquiries, then they can. Yeah, sure. 
But, uh, no, that's, 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 that's all I'm saying. I'm just, you know... Because it's always the same thing, isn't it? Like, I was out <laughs> shopping the other day, uh, you know, treating Suzanne like I do. <laughs> you know, I'm, I, like, I like spending money and that. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I was in WH Smith's. Yeah. Oh, classy. Yeah. The, what the, was, it, uh, was it? Was it a big birthday, was <laughs> it? <laughs> you, you was, it th- was it a 30th? No, I was, I was getting a, uh, <laughs> Was it two biros for the price of one? <laughs> <laughs> I was getting, I was getting a card for my dad for Father's Day anyway, because yeah. I'm seeing him. Yeah. Uh, Big Toblerone. Yeah. There was a giant who, is who, who is it who said Father's Day? They love a, love a Toblerone. I've never understood Toblerone because the only time I see Toblerone is in airports, yeah. right, and minibars. Mm. <laughs> that yeah. is what the, 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 the small Toblerone is for the minibar in a hotel. Yeah. Three star upwards, mm. and the big Toblerone. Well, it's the big is Toblerone is a gift, isn't it? It can uh, only be a gift. You wouldn't uh, buy a big Toblerone you, for yourself. Uh, yeah, a duty free gift. The Toblerone. It's next to um, you know uh, Chanel Number no. Five Toblerone <laughs> yeah. and a bear. <laughs> but it's, who specifically yeah. would you be buying that Toblerone for? I don't know. Someone who's clearly never had it before and would think it was interesting novelty. It, uh, yeah. Well, this I, gift's interesting. I'll tell you what, though, Toblerone is brilliant. I mean, if, if whoever makes that, if they want to send sort of, you know, some Toblerones, I, I mean, I, I will eat Toblerone. Well, I, yeah. I think very much the same about, um, I think very much the same about fags. And of course- just cigarettes. If you've got any boxes of cigarettes and, uh, that you don't want, yeah. you know, and duty free or whatever, I, send them. I'd just like to say that, uh, d- in no way do, do, do I endorse <laughs> Carl's dad's theory that flower companies were behind the death of Diana. No. Uh, I, maybe I could say that on air as well. Um, so these scientists, they're stuck away in the darkness um let's tell them what they've been missing what's the highlights carl of the last um ricky gervais and steve merchant and carl pilgrim by the way xfm 104.9 um etc what's what have they missed for the last uh, just to, just do the last few weeks what have they missed remember they haven't got newspapers they haven't got telly what what's the look at him he's looking at me like i t- just said that in arabic <laughs> what what do you understand Think what what's happened. Think what they haven't got that you know about. What have you seen and heard in the last couple of weeks that they couldn't have? Well, like on on the news and that. What's what's gone on in the world and that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, or just things you've done personally. I think that'll be of less interest. Yeah. <sighs> Pope's dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, li- I like it. I imagine that. Imagine if that wasn't breaking it to them. <laughs> yeah. Like they're listening and you go, what's happened? Pope, the Pope's dead. <laughs> well, they say like, break it to us gently, Carl. Well, I think that's better than how they do it on the news normally, though, isn't it? They make what? a big deal out of it and it pa- you panic a bit when it's the breaking news and you think, oh, there's a war on. Yeah. And you go, Pope's dead and you go, well. So you've just used that old. short, sharp tactic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like ripping the plaster off quickly. Said it, yeah. I just said it softly, no. Pope's dead. <laughs> Mm. When you were, you know all that coverage of the Pope with like these millions of people that had gathered in you know in Rome and stuff. Mm. I was thinking about you remember we talked about the Queen Mother mm. and they were queuing up and queuing up and queuing up to see the Pope. Yeah, like state. four hours. And to once get a again, glimpse. I couldn't help but feel if they popped on some kind of like dessert trolley and just wheeled them past <laughs> everyone else, <laughs> they could have got that done in about three quarters of an hour. Yeah, you know, once again, people not thinking, they're not expanding their minds. So you're yeah, like me. Well, like students in rag week exactly. with a with put a bed it, down on the street. Those novelty beds. They're all dressed in kind of cardinals gear. Yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, trundle him off and down there, yes. But it's, the way, it's, it's the way they also said they've now got a new Pope. He's hardly new, is he? <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't they learn from the last one? Sure. You're taking on old people. Yeah, yeah. My dad couldn't even get a gig in being king. <laughs> 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 So, who have we offended? I mean, I'm, I'm, it, 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 the thing is, it's never, because soon our offensiveness isn't going to be sort of like we're feeling about, about offensive, but it's going to be like we're going to be living with Salman Rushdie. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? The things, I mean, that, that that's, that's pretty, you know, don't, don't have a go no, at the Pope, I'm though. Not, I'm, not, I'm not having a go at him. It's good that he can carry on working and what have you, but I thought everyone <laughs> had to retire at like 60 or whatever. Oh, bloody hell. But, you know, whatever, if, if you can get away with it. Yeah, why couldn't your dad get a, uh, a gig in B&Q? I it's mean, he goes, he's 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 goes he's there a lot, doesn't he? He goes there a lot! That's why, <laughs> if you're just joining us, joining us for this one-off show because you're trapped in a bunker somewhere in the Antarctic, you should know this of Carl's dad. He's a thief. He steals things, right. and we've, we've openly discussed this before. He steals this from other elderly ladies and elderly people. Perhaps oh, he's not like raffles, though. He doesn't go into their house. He's not a gentleman thief. No, what's it that, that people put, let's put 
put this in context. You know, he's not he's not a villain, but sometimes when people leave groceries lying around in a public telephone box. No, what it was where they live now. They've retired, right? <laughs> they've moved. I won't say where they are, but somewhere quiet, right? And it's so quiet. <laughs> it's not a witness re uh, relocation <laughs> protection <laughs> scheme. <laughs> because because there's only about eight people living in this village, it's not worth like the, 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 the like corner shop. There's only open. eight people living it's, in the village. It's quiet. The it village quiet. of the damned. <laughs> so uh, so anyway, so rather than keep the shop open, you meant to call up and go, all right, Harry. Uh, I need some milk today. Right. And they stick it in a phone box outside in the shop and my dad found that out. <coughs> so when he's been out, just stop off at the phone box, have a look at what's, what's left lying around. Yeah. But of the eight, I mean, there's eight people in the village. <laughs> my attention would be instantly drawn to the dodgy mank fella. Mm. I mean, I, I, you know what I mean? It seems, in Manchester you can probably get away with this, there's a lot of scum up there, but down mm. in this little village, you know, you've got a little Miss Marple type and a little, you know, country policeman. He's, he's stopped doing it now, hasn't he? Has he? He's stopped doing it, yeah. Cleaned up his act. Yeah. 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 Good, alright, so with the Pope's dead, any other big news? Um, there was that, uh, that thing I told you about last week, the foot-long spider eats chicken. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Go into my mum and dad's today. Oh. Uh, I'll cut to the chase freak. They basically, it's like, we got about four pages where they drive to his mum and dad's. Oh, Jesus I'll Christ. skip past that because it's yeah. fucking forever. Got there, <laughs> mum and dad, mum made him some dinner. The old woman next door, brackets, whose man was a witch, just popped that <laughs> in brackets. <laughs> just popped that in brackets. I think we've discussed that before, actually, the old woman whose man was a witch. <laughs> whose man was a witch? Yeah. Oh. The old woman next door has been worrying because she keeps seeing adverts on the telly about changing to digital TV. She's saying she doesn't want wires drilled into her walls because they'll make a mess. My dad told her that it doesn't matter <laughs> because it will probably won't happen until 2012 and she'll be dead by then. He didn't say that to her, though, did no, he? No, he did. They've got, you know, she, she's old. It doesn't, she knows she's gonna die. I mean, it's something we've all got in common. And he's right, isn't he? Why is she worrying about it? Maybe that's sorted it out. Put it into perspective for her. You will be dead when this happens. Don't be worrying about it. But everybody worries, don't they? You've got that little sort of hole in your head that you fill with worries. You know, everyone's got to fill that little <laughs> worry, worry hole with worries, and that's it. Worry hole. Everyone's got to we've fill the worry hole with worries. We've got to assume that there's a worry hole. A worry hole. Don't I, be with worries. I love the fact that, you know, uh, doctors in the million years would dig this up and go, humans used to have a worry <laughs> hole. <laughs> Went to bed around midnight. Suzanne and I decided to sleep tops and tails because it made we get a bit more room. Me dad had cut a bit off the mattress to fit it between two cupboards. It's amazing how much of a difference it makes <laughs> just sawing off a bit of the mattress. Mm -hmm. You sort of roll to the edge, but the weight of the blankets keeps you in. This is like something from a Roll Dowl book. No, it's just, it's just, uh, you know, you think anything, you can sort of trim anything, can't you, and it normally works. But with a mattress, I mean, he, he only took off, I don't know what how long that is. But he's sawn off about that much on the mattress and then has stapled it back together again. Amazing. And it just makes so much difference. Of course it does, because a mattress is a very carefully designed object. Yeah, you wouldn't think so, though, would you? Well, you, you would if you had a fucking brain in your nuts. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> is he, is he, someone took his brain out of his worry hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! He's sort of matching up. So we decide to sleep tops and tails. It just gets stranger. It's so strange. Why? He did it to make the room nicer with the with the cupboards on either side. So he sorted a mattress in half. <laughs> well, not in half. Can you imagine how much harder it must be to saw a mattress in half? What did he use? What a big electric saw? Uh, well, it must have been yeah, because there's a lot of springs and stuff in there. Jesus! So what happens to the springs? They just spring out the side. Well, some some sort of stick out a little bit, but you're not lying on top, are you? They come out the side. So he's just got a bit of gaffer tape and a staple gun. Unbelievable! Oh, <laughs> man alive! It's like, th does he run it as a hotel? <laughs> <laughs> That's unbelievable. There are squats with better bedding arrangements. Well, we've had a bit of a bad thing in our house about mattresses and that, because when we first bought our uh, first flat in Salford, you know what it's like when you buy somewhere, you, you, you sort of, you haven't got any money, have you, to buy extra stuff that you need. Mm. So, we bought a bed, right, but there's that rip-off thing with beds where you buy a bed, but a mattress doesn't come with it. Which I've never understood that. Because it's not a bed, is it? Without that mattress, it's not a bed. It's a car without an engine. You wouldn't go, there you go. Well, that seems cheap. Well, there's no engine in it. So we bought this, we bought this, like, you know, uh, flat and what have you. And we bought the bed. And then, uh, like, oh, we haven't got a mattress. So my dad got one from Uncle Skip. Alf. <laughs> no, well, from that Uncle Alf fella, because he had one in his van that he used to use now and again if he was, like, <laughs> travelling round. 
he's just keep in the in the back on this mattress. Amazing. A bloke who drove around in a van with a mattress in the back. So Uncle Alf. Clothes. So Uncle Alf, right? Who will tell me about Uncle Alf. Well, you know about him. He's the one who slept in a dinghy. <laughs> Because his mattress was in his car. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, why didn't he go? Oh, well, Alf, where's the bed? Left it in the car again. Oh, blow up the dinghy. <laughs> blow up the dinghy. I'm not going to go out and get the, not this time of night. So mm. anyway, my dad got me got me his mattress, and uh, and it just stunk a diesel. <laughs> and Suzanne was like, "Oh, I'm not happy with this." And I think she realised sort of what sort of family she got herself into. Of. Wow, she landed on her feet when she got you. So now you. she's always a bit touchy about you know mattresses and things. Unbelievable. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Uncle Alf, of course, sadly passed away when he couldn't escape from his sinking ship. <laughs> <laughs> the fire engines were too late. <laughs> no one got out of the way because they were laughing too much. <laughs> the mad woman next door saw me and said, Hello, Clive. <laughs> you live in a nursery rhyme. <laughs> the old man down the road. Yeah. The old woman next door whose mum's a witch. <laughs> Uncle Alf, who lives in a dinghy. <laughs> It's not a real place. It's like fucking Narnia. It's a children's TV program. Unbelievable. Oh God. Oh, just all of them there on this broken mattress, trying to find the golden ticket. Oh God. Oh God. The old fella down the road talked to my dad a bit. He kept bees in the back garden. Oh, for fuck's sake. Here comes the bee man. His Yorkie dog was knocking about when he was messing with him and it ended up getting stung 150 times. <laughs> oh, little bastard! What is he doing? <laughs> it's not dead, but it cost a lot to get all the stings out. I don't know why people keep dangerous pets and insects. The amount of gear he had to wear to play with them is barmy. I don't think he's playing he's with them. He's not playing with them, is he? Well, he's, what is he doing then? Well, I don't know, but I think he should get the dog the same protection. Yeah, but but uh, that's just it, isn't it? It's like you can't mix your pets. If you've got a snake, you don't have a mouse. Do you know what I mean? They don't get on, and it's the same with them. Don't have bees. I can't imagine one bit of enjoyment. The, the only thing he does is the honey, and it's like, well, how much is that to buy? It's not worth messing about wearing a big white suit just to get some honey. There's a shop down the road. Because your dad was a cabbie, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. Yeah, couldn't stand it, but it's it's good money. He was a prof- he wasn't like a chancellor. Black what cow. was Black what cow. was he What was he doing when he put that little Forrest Gump in a in a weedy bin? That was uh, that was part of the cab company thing. They had to do like a charity event once a year, and he did it one year. Never asked him again. Tell the story again. I I know, no, I'd about. rather not because because we, we got a few sort of. Uh, Complaints about it. Why? Why do you get complaints about it? Because it's because he put a kid in a bin, and it's not the thing to do. <laughs> so. But we could use it as a sort of sobering lesson for people. <laughs> yeah, tell it like a tell it like a you know don't yeah. you shouldn't do it. No, it's, it's I, yeah, but that's how I did it last time. But people still didn't like it. All the stuff I tell you, I don't, you know, we don't take the mickey out of people on purpose. No. We, it's real life, innit? And mm. that goes on in life. Yeah. My dad I, was saying that in hospital, though. Do you know how he was in hospital? Yeah. You know, he did some jokes about old people and that. And he said, at the end of the day, if something makes you laugh, it's funny. Mm. And if it makes you laugh, you can't help laughing, can you? Do you know Fair what enough. I mean? So, <laughs> what are you meant to do? <laughs> and yeah. laughing's good for you. Yeah. So, but even being laughed at isn't as good for you, is it? No, but there's probably more people laughing at one person, so if you balance it out, <laughs> there's only one person who's upset and there's a bunch of people laughing. <laughs> so, it's... it's <laughs> genius! Give me an example of that, give me an example. Well, for instance, Carl Pilkington as he talks and the people listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, give me an example of like, so, uh, you know... I can't, well, I can't because, again, that's what I'm saying, I can't tell you the story, because yeah. there might be someone out there who... This person might even be listening and think, I forgot about that and you brought it all back to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so I'd I prefer to leave it, but I think people know- Why did he put him in the bin in the first place? Because he was getting out of hand. What was he doing though? You see, I can't explain- He can, don't be silly! I prefer to- to leave it, honestly. What, what, what was he doing? Was he annoying him? He was annoying me dad and the other people in the cab. Right. And he thought, how can I deal with this mm. before it gets too out of hand? Yeah. <laughs> he pulled over and put the lad in a wheelie bin. I'm gonna bet. So we'll, we'll leave that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. How old was the kid? Um, <laughs> I'm not sure, but I mean, it was a trip to sort of Blackpool, so <laughs> I'm guessing. Do you think it was one of the rides? 17. This is right. rubbish. 17? Yeah. Oh, he's quite an old lad then. So, so a big lad. Yeah. Well, let's. let's uh, did he pick him up? He picks him up and put him in a wheelie bin. <laughs> 
fucking joke. He said to have it back. <laughs> and then on the way back, he got him back again. He said, right, you won't do that again. On the it? way back? Yeah, he left him there for a bit. He left him there, what, they went to Blackpool yeah. and he left the kid in the wheelie bin? Yeah. Did but, he? Yeah. What, was the kid in the wheelie bin when he drove back? Yeah. Did he not get out? No, because how do you get out? It's tricky, isn't it? And <laughs> he wasn't a normal kid, was he? Let's, let's leave it. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't a normal kid. Right. Right then. So, uh... Is your father in prison? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think he should be. Can we put oh. a song on? Yeah, go on then. I can't remember being a baby, and I put that down to it being boring. <laughs> <laughs> Because you only remember the you good can't things. You remember your birthday. No, it's, it's, you remember the good things in life, don't you? I'm quite happy. I can sit down for a good hour or so and just think back and go, oh, that was good. When was the last time you reminisced? Well, my mum and dad have been around, haven't they? So, been yeah. reminiscing a lot. Yeah. Um, what were you thinking about? We were just chatting about, um, Tic Tacs. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great memories, yeah. The happy memories. No, because I, you see, here's, here's the thing, you're saying how that woman changed mm. when she had her head caved in. <laughs> I, <laughs> he never said that. What did you, well, the, the brain accident. Yeah, um, brain accident, yeah. The, the, the Tic Tacs, mm. now I used to love them. Yeah. When I was younger. Yeah. yeah. My dad got a load of them. Mm. What, this year? No, Just no, recently. years ago. Oh, years like, ago, years ago okay. when I loved them. I said, I love Tic Tacs, mate. Yeah. yeah. He met one of his mates. He didn't nick him from the sweet shop? No, no. No, that's no he knew did. some yeah. mate who, uh, who could get his hand on a load. Right. And, uh, he must have got thief. about, he, he must have got about 30 crates of Tic Tacs. 30 crates of Tic Tacs? Honestly, mm. we'd have about 24 on each crate. We got them, stuck them in a cupboard under the, uh, just in the kitchen in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> now, I worked my way through about six crates. It's quite happy. When? How, in how long? I don't know, in about two weeks, three weeks or something. Right. And then, uh, after that, I'm getting sick of these. Right, yeah. You were minty fresh, but you were sick lovely of lovely fresh breath. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I haven't got that much more to tell you about it. It's just. Well, just, just this, sorry, whoa, whoa, whoa. Bear in mind, this was something he was recently reminiscing with his parents <laughs> yeah, about. No. They were sat around, and we've already learned up to an hour could go by reminiscing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sat around yeah. for an hour, uh, talking about the, the I've great I've already run out of sorry, responses. I've yeah. got nothing to say about no, that. Opinion, I mean, I was nearly going to say, what do you do with the empty little flicky tic tac boxes? Yeah. And then I mean, you realise that that's utterly dull and boring. Uh, well, and not I, just, I was struggling. I don't know what this anecdote is, other than a yeah. bloke. Other than you said your dad, I like tic tacs, mate. He went, all right, I talked to Albert, Albert, you got Tic Tacs? I've got 30 crates, if that'll do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bring him out, put him under cupboard. He's got through 12 crates. What's his breath like? Fucking lovely, but he's been sick all over the cunting place. Oh, do you want some more? No, cause me fucking down. You'll talk about that in a few years' time. Cause me real for about a fucking hour. No. Then we bring it up in an audio book. Well, that's, I think that's how we got onto it, because even though I, tr I tried to get rid of a load, I used to give them to mates, take them to school, say, have some Tic Tacs, yeah. can have them for free. We used a load in the cat litter tray. <laughs> No. No, no we you did. didn't. We did. It no, was just didn't. ways of getting rid of them. Jesus Christ. Sort of freshy, sort of freshy smell, isn't it? Well, it's the same amazing. sort of condensity in that, isn't it? Condensity. It is the same condensity. Um, same condensity. <laughs> yeah, so I got rid of them like that. And then uh, the weird thing was, even though I'd got shot of them all, um, you'd be vacking up and you'd always hear one ting its way up the tube. <laughs> It's tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. It's tinging its way up the tube. Ding tong, ping pong. It's tinging its way up the tube. That sounds like something from Willy Wonka. <laughs> oh god! No, it's just I'm just demonstrating that because that's how many of them there were around the house. You'd drop them, mm. they'd go in every corner and that, like Pac-Man mm. or something. They'd be that's everywhere. You'd be vacuuming up, tinging it. Sheila's up. getting married. Hannah gets confetti. Don't buy any confetti. Go to cupboard under stairs. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's a little memory there, isn't it? It that is a little memory. Up. No, it's, it's a, a really the, little memory. The, the strange Tic Tac house in yeah. Salford, where everything is made of Tic Tacs. Wow, that must have been a hell that's of a. Hell of a time you had with your parents there oh. in the old Tic Tac reminiscence. No, but it's better. You see, you're you're saying, oh, what a boring story that is. Yeah. But when I when I see you've uh, regravelled the drive. Yeah, smell it. <laughs> suck suck the drive if you want. <laughs> 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 no, but it's different. When my mum and dad are there and they can remember that and they're going, oh yeah, yeah, the Tic Tac incidents and stuff. <laughs> the tic -tac. What's known as the Tic Tac incident? <laughs> the Tic Tac let, incident! Let us never speak of the Tic Tac incident. <sighs> I just imagine the clock ticking. There, it's Christmas Day, going, 
what are you smiling at? Oh, remember it used to ting up the tune. <laughs> <laughs> you should think about selling this to Hollywood. Listen, what do you remember then? <laughs> what, what do, do you I remember? remember? That's wow. an amazing thing to That's say. That's a difficult question to answer. Yeah, I don't. Nothing. Nothing at all. Why, out of interest though, and this is, this will sound naive, why don't we remember <laughs> the very early moments of our lives? Why, why is it, is it, is it because it would be too harrowing to remember the point at which we, uh, sort of born? Because I don't really remember anything from those first few years. Why, why is it? Is it just because the brain's not fully formed at that moment? Uh, I don't know. The memory's not sufficiently uh, I, I, developed? I, I, I honestly it's got to be trauma, on it? It's the things, again, we were talking about me being younger, and the youngest I could remember back to was 1978. How old were you then? Uh When were you born? 72. What, you, can only be, you couldn't remember earlier than six? Uh um, You can remember back to about two or three, most people. What, you no, no way. No way. My mum and dad don't even remember me then. <laughs> 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 because you're not doing anything. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> Even remember me then? <laughs> That's amazing. Because oh they, 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 they pinpoint they things. They remember all the tic tacs they never yeah. yeah. Do you remember when Carl was uh, six? Of course I do. <laughs> yeah. Five? Yeah. Four? <laughs> oh, yeah. Three? No. <laughs> Two? No. Because you're not doing anything, are you? <laughs> my mum and dad don't even remember so, me then. And, and it's oh. weird. I remember, uh, must have been about two, sitting on a potty surrounded by Lego. I remember that. Very st strong image I have of that. No, I don't remember that. No, you don't remember that. No, you weren't there. Were there. Were you? What do you mean? What, you don't remember Steve sitting on a potty <laughs> surrounded by Lego? No, I mean, I can't remember having a potty. I remember having well, one of them. I'm not suggesting no, you have the you same memory. You used to go on a fucking litter tray. Now I know why to eat a Tic Tac while you're having a shit. But, um, okay, so what is your very first memory? The one that cropped up the other day was having my eyes sort of uh, glued together by, um... <laughs> <laughs> Gangsters. <laughs> Where's the fucking Tic Tacs? <laughs> Carl, anymore? I'll tell that story that you were telling me about your dad when he was driving. Well, it's just that you were talking about, well, I, I mentioned Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, the Forrest Gump types. When my dad was a, uh, when he was a taxi driver. Yeah. You used to have to, uh, sort of do, y do your bit for the local area. Oh, God. By taking the, uh, the yeah. Forrest, the Forrest yeah. Gump yeah. people to, to Blackpool. Yeah. Is that what they're called now, the Forrest Gump people? <laughs> Is that what the, uh, the organisations that support them are? <laughs> for them to be referred to. A like mini bus with exactly. uh, Life is a box of chocolates. Yeah, exactly. Com. Well, oh. Forrest Gump types. Uh, it yeah. must be, so you work with these people? It these was, pe yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, the people with learning difficulties. Difficult well. yeah. yeah, and they used to get fired. Coming home must have been a busman's holiday. <laughs> <laughs> So he got five of them in the, uh, in the cab, yeah. and he had to go to Blackpool, and four of them were really good, you know, behaving themselves, didn't mess about, weren't fighting and stuff, but there was one who was just causing loads of trouble and he couldn't control him. Oh and what you've got to be able to do with people like that, you don't want them to get stressed out because it's, it's not good for them. It stresses them out and, and you could end up with a bit Thanks, of- Thanks, Dr. Carl. <laughs> you could end up with a bit of a riot on your hands. <laughs> so, so he thought, I'll nip this one in the bud right now. And he pulled up just on the outskirts of Blackpool, and um, he took the one out that was causing problems, and put it in a wheelie bin. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh, I'm sorry. I apologise. Oh, he did what? God. Oh, he God. did it for the good of the others. He put oh. it in a wheelie bin. He was having a good time. He thought it was one of the rides. <laughs> Can you stop saying it? <laughs> Him? Yeah. He, he, you know, he was having a good time, was and and he once he calmed down, my dad went back and picked <laughs> him up, and he, he was fine. He had a good. What time. he left him in there the whole time the others were in Blackpool? No, he left him there not not the whole day, probably about an hour and a half. <laughs> in a wheelie bin. In a wheelie bin. Why couldn't he get out? Because like his arms were trapped on the thing. <laughs> One of those. One, <laughs> what he tied him thing. up? No, do you know like when because he was a big fella, and like he, he managed to get him in so his arms were down the side like that, so it was he was a bit trapped. Wasn't and he screaming and crying and stuff? He was making a bit of no noise, but it, do you know what I mean? What you feel so <laughs> right? <laughs> well, but anyway, that's I didn't really want to talk about. It. You just brought it up because of Forrest Gump. Did, did you did do his you know family know about this? Is this the first time he, they'd have he, heard about this? He didn't get asked to do it again. 
Because <laughs> he had another he had another problem similar to it where he had a, a little minibus <laughs> and it was his job to take a load of old women to the bingo hall and yeah. it was miles away and um, he took him there. There was no problem about about ten old women in a in a minibus. One of them was causing trouble, <laughs> 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 so he pulled over. It. <laughs> no, ah! right? So he took him there. Ah! Everything's fine. He dropped him off. They Not had a lovely the night. Yeah. Right? They had a lovely night. Won a bit of cash. Coming back, it's a bit of a late night and they all started moaning at him, going, "I want to be dropped." off here, take me there, I want to be dropped off first, I've got to get up early, blah blah, you know, <laughs> my husband's expecting me, I'm already late, take me here first, take me there, and he just pulled up, <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, to get out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he made them get out, and they all called for taxis, <laughs> they charged that company who was meant to be taking a moment in the minibus, and he got the sack. Gee. Well, a similar sort of story. You can't be dealing with it when people don't sort of just calm down and, like, solve the situation. Yeah. They're just all like, I want to be dropped off first, take me here first, take me Yeah, so he acts oh, like yeah. a madman. <laughs> 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 He's a <laughs> good. Oh, that was all right, great. We've got, uh, we've got to crack on, haven't we, really? we got Says uh, so much. Yeah. Yes, uh, Nick Drake, a song for the ladies this week from the album Brighter Later at the time of a city clock. That's Goodbye. it. Goodbye. Yeah, Goodbye. See you next time. Bye. My, my mum and dad, right, they moved to this little, like, little house, right, and, um, they had loads of furniture that they collected over the years without chucking out, and they've moved to this small house, so they just had s too much furniture, right? Mm. And, uh, they had this double bed, and that was for, like, you know, when friends come round and that, they can stay there. But the problem was, he wanted to sort of put these wardrobes in the bedroom, right? Right. That went on either side of the bed. Sort of wrapped around because, the bed, yeah. yeah. but because the, s the room was so small, he thought, I can sort that out. Yeah. Right? And he sawed the bed. He sawed the bed? He sawed the whole thing, so you've got like your mattress, your bed, and everything. And well, he just sliced some off. Like a big sandwich, just c cut just a bit off the Just cut the crust about, off. But how much is that, would you say? About eight inches, six about inches. eight inches. But hold on, but that well, won't work. That because it'll all fall out the side, and then what happened to the springs and all the supports and stuff? He it'll just it collapse. It didn't, it didn't all come out and that. I mean, it's not the comfiest bed. <laughs> But, but the weird thing is, he did it, and even though it's only like that eight inches or whatever, it totally ruined it. It's yeah. Like, well, of course it would. No, but what do you think I mean? I don't mean it ruined it as in it looks a mess. No, it would have been uncomfortable. Not even that though, just the fact it's that little bit shorter. It's like, God, for two people this is, this is hard work now. This is like, you haven't got enough room, even though it's only eight inches. Why did he, why did he build the wardrobes first without <laughs> measuring, putting the- I think he did all that and then thought, oh, it'll easily fit in there, and it didn't, so he had to sort of saw a bit off the bed. <laughs> but it's just weird how only eight did inches- Did he use an electric- one of those electric saws? Yeah. And there was amazing. just- presumably there was just kind of- what sort of material and wood just flying everywhere. What did he do oh. with the legs? Did he have to move the legs he in moved, a bit? He moved the legs. Looking at it, right, once it's got like the, the quilt on it and everything, you wouldn't know. I was sure. like, yeah, that's alright, you've done a good job. Yeah. And I went to bed at night. He's like, you know, sleep well. Got up in the morning after having about 45 minutes sleep and said, something not right with that. Yeah. You goes, really you are mean? your father's son, aren't you? Something <laughs> <I said, laughs> not I right said, with not that. it's not right. And he said, oh, well, I said, what have you done? It doesn't seem the same. And he said, oh, I had to shorten it sort of thing, you mm. know, to fit in the gap. I said, well, I can't sleep in it. I said, and there was a big kerfuffle. My mum was saying, look, you have our bed then and we'll sleep in that one. Mm. And my dad was like, sod that. Yeah. Yeah, it's ruined. <laughs> you know. Some, some idiot cut it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, there was a big debate going on about where we should sleep and I was saying, look, you know, I only come and see you like every couple of, you know, probably once can every I, six can months. I'm not being funny, but next time we go home, can I film it? Mm. Just for, I mean, Channel 4 or something. Well, uh, you know, I mean, the Osbournes is not on at the moment. The yeah, Pennington's. Uh, uh, that would be extraordinary. Oh, oh, can we film it? Oh, <laughs> ho, ho, ho! That's brilliant. Is anyone from Channel 5 listening to this show? Or Bravo? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Pilkingtons. Weird, though. Weird. Play a record? Or do you want to play? Do you want to play, uh, do you fancy playing some of yours? Uh, what, have we got anything? I don't know, something that was sent in to you, maybe? Oh yeah, no, I tell you, yeah, I'd like to play this, yeah, Bronze Age Fox, uh, band from Bristol, my neck of the woods. Always uh, working, the tune, Carl, the always working, he's always working, he's on the ball, he's on the ball, he's on the bobby ball. <laughs> Anne Robinson, um, put in the Welsh into room 101. What, cos she didn't like him or that? Yeah, she just said, well, they're, you know, they're going in the net, you know. Can can she said it slightly more eloquently than that. Yes, yeah, yeah. I can under- the people or the place? I don't know. I think, I think it was the place and therefore the people. Yeah. 
What do you mean, yeah? No, well, you know me mum and dad have sort of uh, moved from Manchester, they've retired now in Wales. Oh, yeah. And it is, uh... <coughs> Look at his face, turning his nose up. No, but it, it is pretty depressing. Do you know what I mean? It's just one of them places that... Uh, it's like you go back in time and that when you go there. I mean, maybe the major cities there, maybe Cardiff is alright. What, even coming from Manchester it's like going back in time? It's just, uh, it's like one of them places, that w it feels like every day is Sunday. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's just depressing and grey and slate Lots everywhere. Lots of walking around going, I'm late. <laughs> well, yeah, here's, here's the sort of attitude they have, right? This, and this is true, because my mum and dad live there and that, right? And they love it, it's alright, it's an healthy place to go when you get older and that. But, this, this is why they don't move on in Wales. Well, I just start to <laughs> make another no, no. sorry to any Welsh people listening. We're not saying you don't move on. Carl is. No, but sorry about the little Chinese shoes. Again the thing well. is, it's good that in a way that they do do that, and they don't want to be like you know rushing about everywhere because the way London is isn't that great either, is it? Because sure. it's totally opposite here, right? Yeah. So I'm not I'm not having a go. It is a bit dull. I think even people who live there will agree with me, okay. right? <laughs> but like one of the shops that my mum and dad use, right? It's only a little sort of villagey type shop. Uh, they can't be bothered staying open for hours and hours, right? Because there's not enough people to use the shop. Yeah. So what you do is, uh, they get used to what you buy. And they leave it out. They put it in a phone box outside. They put it in a phone box? Yeah. So it doesn't get wet. So my dad's loving that. Well, Once yeah. he found that out, it was like, brilliant. But that, how is that a bad thing? That's brilliant. Well, it's not for other people. It is for my dad. Because he's picking up all sorts of stuff. Oh, chickens. no, he's not. Oh, yeah. He's not nicking other people's shopping. Well, it's not like nicking, is it? Because it's not theirs yet. <laughs> oh! And you've stitched him up on radio. Well, of course, because yeah. they're going to think, who's that? Wh who is there in town with a mank accent? Who, who, keeps, ma who yeah. keeps making phone calls? <laughs> and is getting fatter? Yeah. That's the. You've stitched him I right love up that. There, I Carl. love that that your dad was excited when he found out. Oh. I can't believe, I can't believe that he's moved there, he's retired to this little village <laughs> where it's based on trust and community and he is abusing it, he's using his scally mank ways. Bloody hell, Lakers, and there's no bread again. <laughs> there's old women was going empty? hungry, yeah. their cats aren't getting fed, and your whore father is just, I can't, oh, that's obscene, that's obscene. Oh, I think it's a uh, die thief. That oh. fella from <laughs> Manchester. <laughs> I don't even think they've got Sky there yet, have they? They can't listen, they won't, they won't know what's... I think you've stitched him right up. I hope you have, actually. I hope he goes down for it. I hope he's hounded out of the community like Frankenstein's monster. Yeah. They should get burning torches, go up to the set mansion. Fire to his, set fire to his cottage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right, well... He's uh, out of the choir. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about this woman. Well, it was just because you were saying about the, you know, our, our living. We are broadcasting now, aren't we? This is actually going out, this is live. This isn't us sort of like... Yeah, but you, you were just talking about how I lived in an odd village. Yeah. With kids with big heads and all that, right? And what I wanted to do. What is that again? The, there's two kids with big heads. Yeah, they, they just had sort of big heads and, uh, webbed hands and that. They went to the school. <laughs> and, uh... I got, when I spoke to my dad the other day, because I'm going, I'm going to see my mum and dad tomorrow. Oh yeah. So I said, oh, I, have, have we got any school sort of school photographs with the uh, big-headed kids in? <laughs> and he said, no, no, nobody bought bought those sort of school photos because cause they were in it, so it was always a bit ruined. <laughs> but I said, well, <laughs> no, no. He said they said sales were you know because he obviously talked to other dads and stuff like that. And he just said, oh, no one, no one bought them. But anyway, so... I would uh, love them! Yeah! That's why I'd buy them! Yeah, but I wouldn't stand out, would I? If I'm not saying something. Yeah, well, uh, well. Mm. So, um, but anyway, so I was talking about, you know... When you say they had big heads, what do you mean? Do they look like someone from Doctor Who? They were just quite, quite big. But they weren't related? No. So why did two blokes with big heads and webbed feet? I lived in a weird area. There was a, was there a, a chemical plant close by. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you've never told us that before. That explains a lot. <laughs> Not just the freaks in your neighbourhood, but... No, well, there, was weird, there was loads of weird stuff going on. Uh, there was this, like I said, there was this woman who, uh, 
used to like live in one of the council flats, right? And uh, she had a three wheel wheeled sort of big. What do you call it? Sam, <laughs> three wheeled Sam. <laughs> he was the weirdest bloke we ever knew. What do you call it? Like a big tricycle, tricycle but for a la for an adult rather than one for a kid. It yeah. was a big one. It wasn't a motorbike though. It was a no, no, no. It was a push bike thing. Right. Yeah. And she used to uh, sort of ride down the road with a fella sat in the basket on the back <laughs> with his like legs dangling over and they'd be going to like the like the pub and what have you. Was it a different fella each time or the same one? <laughs> yeah, same, same yeah. Old, sort of bald headed fella. So it was in collection for like organs and things. And oh. Bring out your ill. <laughs> and then oh. just people just throw granddad just in the back and go yeah. like we get four quid for granddad. But, but, but she's He's got a lovely pair of testicles on him. They're she very low but they're extremely like you're dead or nearly dead. <laughs> She used to uh, pick on her husband quite a lot. They'd be in the pub and what have you, and they'd be sat by themselves, but she'd always be sort of, you know, having a go at him, moaning at him, sort of pushing him about and that. Mm -hmm. So my dad and his mate, right, uh, they went round to their house, knocked on the door, she answered, and he said he, he, said he was a copper, right? He said, you know, Detective uh, Pilkington, gonna come in and have a word. So I'm just gonna make a note of impersonating <laughs> a police officer. <laughs> yeah, 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 for, for, for the good, he went in and sort of said, now, I've heard, <laughs> be here, right? yeah. I've heard, I've heard, you know, you're picking on your husband a lot, yeah. we'll be keeping an eye on you, do it again, and uh, there'll be trouble. And she backed off after that, she That's was alright. And that was the husband. Did, 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 was he still in the basket though? Was he allowed to ever sort of like ride up front with her, or was he just always no, in the basket? No, he just uh, she'd sort of stop picking on him in, in public places and stuff. That's like good. That. Just you can't, you can't get done, can you? Just for doing that? Uh, I think impersonating a police officer. Well, you is probably did. There, there was no gain. Um, I, I think you can't impersonate a police officer full stop. But I think they'd probably be lenient on him that he was, uh, you know. But, but let's, let's face it. He's, you know, he's he's not going to be caught because why would anyone know? But it's not like his son's going to say it on a on a radio station, is it? And stitch him right up. Did he, is this something you did generally? Kind of a little bit of light vigilante work? <laughs> just whatever. With him and his mate, just you know, if they saw something going on, they go, "What can we do?" Sure. What a little scam can we do or whatever? <laughs> That's fantastic! <laughs> that is brilliant! Right, okay, um, we coming up, Nob News. Smashing Pumpkins, Terror of Rock. That, of course, Rick is available on their greatest hits. Brilliant. If you want. To. I, I mean, that, that's how I rock, so yeah. I, I know, I know they, uh, I'm very much the shape of a cherub as well. Well, indeed, indeed. Naked with a yeah. couple of and a rosy big arse and a, tr a trumpet. Yeah. Do they have trumpets? I don't know. Yeah. Um, I've just had an email here. Um, monkey news. Yeah. From a listener. Yeah. Monkey spotted holidaying in Cornwall. <laughs> a chimp. <laughs> a chimp was spotted holidaying in Cornwall last week after befriending a family of three. One onlooker said it was incredible. He dressed and behaved exactly like a human being. He even settled the hotel bill at the end of their stay. The only telltale sign was his lack of table manners and the incoherent babble when he opened his mouth. <laughs> there we are. So well, uh, we did that, Carl. That's the listeners, Carl. That's oh. Joanne. Oh. Amusing, articulate. Accurate. She Accurate. remembered exactly who was there and everything, sitting yeah. in the bill. It's all there. So, I mean, even though people think that you're slightly simian, uh, you know, slightly less than human on the evolutionary ladder, they do listen to you. <laughs> so, I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know who's more stupid in the end, you or the listeners. Well, you may recall, Rick, at the end of last week when Carl had to shoot off early, uh, we issued a little request yeah. for listeners just to bombard Carl's email with um, just pointless emails that really weren't about anything, just to clog up his email for when he returned. Yeah. Rick, they sent them all to us. Brilliant. I mean, that's the kind of listeners that we've got. We've got reams here on our email of just junk. I mean, it's like a Marx Brothers plot, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, ludicrous. just listen. I listen I got, to what we say. I got one, uh, about a shaved cat. Well, that's not pointless. I'll be reading that later. Oh, you <laughs> loving it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm happy. That'll keep me going for a couple of weeks. Uh, I'll be reading that later. Did you get to the Monkey Sanctuary? Because this was the big thing. You were going into Cornwall, you were going to visit the Monkey Sanctuary. I've never seen someone more excited. You had two days put aside for the Monkey Sanctuary. Oh, I know. How did it go? Monkey World? Um, we were on our way, right? I found like a little, uh, in the little cottage that we had, right? It's like a little, uh, little folder, mm -hmm. you know, with little leaflets in saying if you, you know, if you're into mountains, you want to go here. Yeah. If you're into castles and that. Uh, a little Castle monkey world. on the leaflet, right? So I thought, I'll be needing that. Took that out, made sure that's safe and yeah. that, right? We get in the car, getting ready to go. Uh, my dad says, where is it? I look on the back. It's in a place called Low or something like that, right? Yeah. So uh, we're on our way. Can't believe me, look. It's going to be a great day and all that. Yeah. And then uh, 
start looking at my leaflet, right, and, uh, noticed didn't have any chimps there. Yeah, it's not, it's not Monkey World. It wasn't a Monkey World. Well, how, what, no. what was it called then? Something like... M m monkey Town. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it just, it, it had like woolly monkeys in it. That's, that's what they it had was. what? Woolly monkeys. What are woolly monkeys? Those things that Johnny Vegas off the advert. Right. Loads of them. They're dumped now since ITV Digital yeah. went under, so they just put them in a cage. I don't no, understand. They're woolly, they're, they're like, um, they're sort of like little fluffy, little baboon type things, woolly monkeys. I mean, not, it's not your chimp. It right. is not, it's not your classic chimpanzee. So did the car screech to a halt? It, it was like, it was like, <laughs> yeah. it was like the mission in Armageddon. As you said, abort. Um, <laughs> we're on the way back. <laughs> so how far uh, have you got before you bothered to read the leaflet? Uh, uh probably about five miles right. away from where we were. So what did you do with yourself? You must have been distraught. We well, went they to... broke down and then they heard banjo music. No, we went to a, uh, sort of a, an amusement place. Brilliant. I'd love to see you in that. What, with, with putting those coins in so it has to roll down and they go flat and then an arm pushes it them. It was mate. one of them. Really? But I, I spent out years on that when I was little. Well, there's oh. a new one. I can't be bothered explaining it, but it's a con. Uh, we went to this place, right? My mum and dad had been, been there before and yeah. they said, you'll love it. It's brilliant. It's got like uh, a war bit in it. A war bit, right. Yeah, like, because they know I'm into tanks and stuff. Yeah. So you'll be loving that. So, sorry, I didn't know you were into tanks. No. Well, they're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Right. He's gone from one of his childhood passions to whether all right. <laughs> I know, yeah. Go on. And, uh, but it was, it was, it was awful. I mean, my mum and dad had been there before and he said, no, you'll love it, but yeah. it was a, like a really miserable day. Sure. Right? Uh, all the rides and that were broke. Yeah. Broke? Uh, it just reminds you of Manchester. <laughs> 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 my dad just ended up, uh, he was more interested, there was a really fat family there. <laughs> well, presumably he was breaking into the machines, <laughs> trying to scoop off the cash. <laughs> no, I cool. like the fact that those poor fat family were going, why are those people looking at us? Yeah. Oh, do you want a ride one? No, but they, they we're were- We're not, we're not a ride. They were <laughs> massive and he just like, look at that, look at the state of that. A whole family. Yeah. Just, you know, fat. Bloaters, yeah. Oh, uh, No, down. but he, 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 he because fat, there's no, no need for it, is there? And he, he was really like, oh god. And then he wanted to follow them into the house of mirrors to see what they'd look like. <laughs> uh, but my mum, my mum had got bored. She went off to buy a little, uh, Snow White figure. She couldn't believe her look, it was only two ninety nine. Yeah. She thought it was gonna be really expensive. Sure, so she's bought one of them. Yeah. Uh, so she enjoyed that. And then my dad says, come on, we go in. It's rubbish, this. <laughs> uh, well, the fat family wouldn't <laughs> let him play with him. So, uh, he just said on the way home, he said, I can safely say that I never want to go there again before I die. <laughs> so, that was that. And then we went home. Why would he ever give you that information in case it was like a, a secret birthday present? Yeah. Go, oh God, what if they get me a trip to here? Or if he's in a coma and you go, I'll tell you what, I'll Dad. tell you bring him out of it. <laughs> that fat couple. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. By his bedside. Yeah, yeah. But, but Suzanne said she now realises why I am the way I am after yeah. spending like a week with him. Well, they, they told they told her that they dropped you on your head as a kid, or no, just just like you know the way they act and that. Right, yeah. Um, no, they were saying things like Suzanne. So, uh, why is the moon out at night in the <laughs> seventh <laughs> day? Yeah. Oh God, yeah. yeah. Oh uh, God, was, there's it, three of them. <laughs> Suzanne, can you tie my shoelaces? <laughs> it was the bit when my dad said, "Don't waste money on a coffin for him. Just put him in a bin bag." <laughs> <laughs> your father said that. About himself. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a great idea. I'm glad you mentioned that because that is great. That gives me an idea. So is it, man. Look <laughs> at Carl. I love that look of Carl. Carl is looking back and forth. You know when, it, when you sort of uh, you go t t to a cat and it looks back and forth between two people. That's very much like Carl's looking at us now. Or when like a child sees a midget or something in the street. <laughs> They're just transfixed, aren't they? And the parents oh, just don't stare. When we were pushing, um, Ash, just the, our producers, uh, in a wheelchair, and we were pushing he's through the VC. He's not a midget, we should make that. No, he's not a little midget, he's not tall. But, um, we were pushing him through the VC, and this little kid just came up and just stood in front of him and looked at him. Yeah. <laughs> I just laughed. It was funny. <laughs> do you do that? I imagine that you get caught staring at him. <laughs> do you go out to people? Do you go out to people with problems and go, Mummy, is that a monster? Well, I was telling you one about when I used to go with my dad in the taxi. Oh, yeah. What, what's this story? Well, um... Your dad, father was a taxi driver? He, dad used, well, he had loads of jobs. Mm. Which he did back then, and they don't do that anymore, do they, people? Don't. 
they don't have do loads of stuff. Sure. But um, it, one at one point. He had a black cab, and I used to uh, used to go with him. Used to get a, like a, a beer crate and put it in the front of the black cab, yeah. and sort of sit just next to the meter. Yeah. And um, <laughs> anyway, we got this call, and uh, like the guy on the end of the radio said, "Oh, you've, you've got uh, you got your son with you, haven't you?" So he said, "Yeah." So it's just like you know, we've got a pick up at uh, number eleven Village Lane or whatever. And he said, oh, "All right." And it was this woman. It was like a woman version of the Elephant Man. Wow, the elephant woman. Yeah, it looked. Like <laughs> it, 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 like, it was really oh. strange because I was in the front of the cab, and um, when you're a kid, you, if you if something looks odd, you, you're a bit scared of it, aren't you? Yeah. And my dad was like, "Look, it'd be all right." And we're, we're driving towards just, her. Look at her, don't worry, so I've got loads of buns. And just to you think, I just throw one down the street. You're, you're, right you're, after you're it. being mean, right? How, old, bit, yeah. how old are you? Eighteen. No, I was, I was about twelve or sure. something like that, eleven, twelve. Mm. And as we got closer to her, it looked like sh she she was holding like a bag of spuds on her shoulder for a snack, <laughs> right? <laughs> and her head was all a bit mangled and messy and that. And uh, my dad says, my dad said, whatever you do, don't stare at her face. Yeah. And she got in the back. Because you turn into stone. <laughs> she got in the back, and I I had like the mirror the. Dri the driver's mirror thing, yeah. and sort of having a, having a look, trying to work out, and I really, I mean, he said, don't stare at her face. I couldn't work out where her face was. <laughs> it was that, it was that weird. <laughs> oh, God. So I'm not sure you're from Manchester. I think you're from, like, Narnia or something. <laughs> yeah, you or, got frog or, boys walking yeah, around. the Lord of the Rings. That, that got, like, the claws of a lobster and the, and the head of a toad. Yeah. And you got women getting in with spuds for heads. I mean, what, what this sort is not of, what Manchester. is this, this is not the place you grew up? This yeah. is mad. Oh, you can't believe it in London, can you? You come down and you go, look, symmetry. It must be amazing. It must be a, a, a thing to do with upbringing, though, mustn't it? Because, again, do you know I've said to you before, Years ago, when I was a kid and didn't have any worries, good looking lad, mm. you go through it a bit, have a few more worries, and you look knackered. <laughs> now, back there, there's a lot more worries and stuff, so you get a lot more freaks. Whereas in London, everyone's like happy, aren't they? Got I love the money. fact that stress can cause your <laughs> fingers to fuse and your heads yeah. to grow. No, but if, if she must have been really stressed to have a head. Like yeah, yeah. She was, yeah, was well, she an accountant or something? Yeah. <laughs> wow. You know what I mean? But what? But what does she do? What does she say? Where was she, she going, by she the way? She couldn't speak. London <laughs> Zoo, please. <laughs> she, was, she was going to like to a the fair. <laughs> Serious, honest to God. On my mum's life, she was. Because at the end of the day, that's a good thing with animals. They don't judge you, do they? <laughs> She's not she an, was animal. an animal. She's a human being. She's not actually an elephant. No, but she you know the elephant man was not actually an elephant. <laughs> you understand that? He's got no elephant genes in him at all. No. That was just a cruel name people gave him. Yeah. No, it's the name of the disease, isn't it? Elephantitis. <laughs> so listen, so this woman, why was she going to a pet shop? <laughs> she was going to a pet shop? Yeah. What, to find her husband? <laughs> Uh, is, this, is this true? No, it is true, yeah. Oh, I'm, God. I'm not, I'm not taking the mickey because it must be so, really bad for you. Of course you. it is. Carl, 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 I we have I'm going on to you today about cutting myself shaving. Yeah. What's going on about that? To think that she, I mean, she's probably not alive now, but to mm. think. But, but you're saying, you're going to say this is a worse problem than a little cut shaving, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I think you're right. Like, Carl, you I just, there's, there's a couple of key questions I need to ask. One, if she couldn't talk, yeah. how did she tell your dr father where to drive her? Did she ever get on the Did she her point home? with her nose? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, this has got silly. Pick your song. But and also, <laughs> finally, where did you say she lived again? It was like in a village. A little small village. Right. Um, just and hidden and out of the way. <laughs> All I'm saying is we could maybe get like some sort of coach, book some coaches, get a coach party out there to have a look at her. <laughs> so and, some uh, photos. and now... <laughs> you can make some lemonade. The offspring of a woman and some spuds. Yeah. <laughs> Please enter at your peril, shitty. Give me a shiny shilling. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's terrible. Well, I'm gonna play um, a little bit of Teenage Fan Club song for uh, the lovers here. We left it very late, which we've been just, uh, you know, rapping with uh, Carl P here. And this is I Need Direct. I mean, my dad, right? He can like put windows in his house. Yeah. Do plumbing. He should. It's dark, isn't it? He's, he's done that first of all. Right. So, so he can do what? He's got a multitude of different yeah, jobs. Yeah, he can do all sorts. Do you know what I mean? Mm. If there's a problem in my flat, I can call him up and say, you know, this isn't working. What should I do? Mm. And he'll say like, Is that an operating surgeon? He'll yeah. say, oh, 
Fix it. <laughs> sure. Uh, so what about Monsters, Inc.? What well, yeah. do you make of it? Um, it's so, alright. It, it is a kid's film. It, uh, sort of annoying- Is it? <laughs> okay. I was having like- <laughs> <laughs> what, what gave that away? <laughs> Thank you.